And yeah. I hope, you know, for anybody who's watching this on video, anybody who's in the room, listen to the names. He's going by them really quickly, but he is naming now heads of industry. Rob Markman, yeah. um, Sway from yeah. Sway's Universe. You just named so many people who are still in the game, who are still, you know, operating at a high level, but these are people who you came up with, which seems to be yeah. uh, a, a, a reoccurring theme during this conversation. Um, yeah. You leave MTV, you head on over to Revolt. How does Revolt, that happen? Uh, Prez put in a call. <laughs> uh, you know? well, I mean, well, 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 the, well, the, well, there was rumors of revolt happening. I really just wanted to consult in the beginning, so mm -hmm. I called Prez, I called Michelle James, I called uh, Bentley. You know what I mean? People who I knew uh, had Puff's ear, and I was like, "Yo, can you put in a, a, a good word?" This is really what happened, literally. Yeah. yeah this was a, so I was like, "Put a good word." Uh, at the time. They were interested in someone full time. They weren't interested in like a consultant because I had relocated to Atlanta. I was doing jams remotely from Atlanta, and you know things were happening politically in the MTV building, that, and I was far away. So I was like, I don't know. I don't want to put my eggs in this basket, right? And so I wanted to consult, but they wanted someone full time. And Puff, and Andre, and uh, Andy Schoen were like, you have to relocate. You have to come to LA. And in literally, my interview was like an interrogation. Like, literally, they were like, Puff, the first day, what are you playing? Who are the poor righteous teachers? <laughs> I was like, whoa. I was like, I don't want this job if this is what's going to happen. <laughs> and Andy Sherman was laughing, and Andre was like, like egging him on. And I was like, whoa. I was like, I don't need to do this. I was like, I have an MBA. I can go, <laughs> I can go to work at Wall Street if I want to. Like, like, like this is literally because I had to like push back. Like, yo, like, like chill, like, you know. But they gave me an offer, and I relocated to LA, which was one of the best things that ever happened. And even things like Spotify would not have happened if that didn't happen, because um, what it did was it shook my belief system. I was all of a sudden, I didn't know I was getting older. I had spent 10 years at MTV. And I go to Revolt, and there's all these kids, and they were on Snapchat, and they Vine, and I was like, what is this? What's going on? I'm on Twitter. I'm, I'm just happy. <laughs> and these kids, they literally changed my life, and they rejuvenated my career, because they put me on to so much stuff. And, and Sean could tell you, Puff has this thing where he'll, he'll get in your head, and you'll start believing that you're old. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> And you'll be like, yo, who, you need cultural touchstones. Who's keeping your ear to the street? You're not out there. I'm in the clubs more than you. And I'm like, oh, he is. I'm like, yo. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was almost like a book you know, I, I look at Eddie Lopez in, in, in the audience as well, another former bad boy hey, alumni. Yeah, oh, yeah. And um, he's cracking up right uh, yeah. now because he understands Puff's way of getting in your head and getting the best out of you. Yeah. So go and ahead. You, you stop believing it. And, and what, one of the things that, I, I, I say was one of the most- And first and foremost, what was your role at, at uh, Revolt? Vice President of Music Programming. Okay. So Puff made me in charge of like all the music, not just like the urban music or whatever. He was like, you're gonna do all of this shit. And I was like, all right, cool. So which was great responsibility and leadership ex experience that I, I, I wasn't, that wasn't what I was looking for, but it's what I got. And, and, and I, that, that really helped me a lot too. Um, can, I, can I ask yeah. you a question? BT was established when you get there. Yeah. MTV obviously started it all. Yeah. You get to Revolt. There's a new culture because Revolt is an upstart. It's yeah. new. Yeah. How is that different from coming from these established legacy brands? There's a lot of prayer. <laughs> what? What'd you say? Yeah, a lot, there was a lot of prayer. Like, <laughs> like I, I, was, I was so close to God. <laughs> because I'll tell you why, because there's uncertainty. You don't know what's gonna happen. You, you don't know if it's actually gonna launch. So even when the launch, the day it launched, I didn't even get to enjoy it because I was in a zone trying to meet a deadline for the Gate of Revolt, which was like a hip hop pure play, right? It was like a mix show and, and, and it literally got to the operations center like five minutes before the actual launch. Everyone was at a party and I was in the edit bay like, trying, like yo, is this going through? Is this rendering? Is this? You know what I mean? I was in a zone. So even once I got from the edit bay, it was like, like, you know what I mean? Because you don't, because now it becomes real. Like, right? Now it becomes real. Like, whether all, we spent like a year, a year and a half before we actually got to the air. Like, we had social media, we had all this stuff. 
And, and then it just got so real. And, and that's why I said it changed my life because it forced me out of my comfort zone, right? Because like now I had a nice little run. I was on autopilot. I was on auto cruise. Like, you know what I mean? You see, I, like I memorized phone numbers. Bill don't memorize phone numbers anymore. But you know what I mean? So what happened was now, uh, and all these kids are like calling you OG and this. And <laughs> oh, I, I was like, what's going on? I was like, and then RMC, Revolt Music Conference, changed my life. And one of the best weekends of my life because, first of all, I didn't think it was gonna work, but it, and it did, right? You had all these young people who had crowdfunding from uh, like their class. Like people would, like have a class and like, yo, I wanna go to Revolt, the first Revolt Music Conference. And then they would all chip in and send by a, send, send someone to represent them like from like Emerson College in Boston or wherever. And it was like unreal, it was like, yo, like with the energy was crazy. And people coming from Dubai and Nigeria and the people I met there, uh, are, are, I'm still like, you know what I mean? Like this, like that first Revolt Music Conference. And then I introduced the streaming panel. And that, that opened my eyes to some other shit. Like, you know, am I allowed to swear? No, oh, free, yeah, okay, okay. free. It opened my eyes to some other shit. Cause the, the, literally, what made have, you? What made you introduce? And, and it's the perfect segue for where we're about to go. But what made you introduce this, the streaming panel at? I don't the know. It was RNC. like Andre or someone said, "Tuma, you're going to introduce the." Oh, I, I didn't sign up for it. They were like, the, the, "We had the founder of SoundCloud, Alex Young." And, 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 and I'm sorry to cut you off, but just for anybody watching um, or anybody in the room who doesn't know, he keeps referring to Andre. This is Andre Harrell, who is um, Puff's. Mentor, yeah, and and the founder of Uptown Records, responsible yeah. for some of the greats, Mary J. Blige, Jodeci, so forth and so on. And the, and he was now he was responsible for the RMC. So we just showed up and did what we were told, like right. And I, and and by the way, I was a skeptic at first. I was like, it's too early. It's a baby brand to make something that ambitious in such a short time. But it was a wild success. It was incredible. Why do you think the RMC worked? Because of. Uh, there was a market hole. There was no How Can I Be Down. There was no Jack the Rapper. There was no Impact Music Conference. So there was no place where young, hungry, passionate, pure artists could get information or game to uh, uh, a network also. Find those peers that uh, outside of an educational institution. So all of a sudden you had one? And, and they didn't even know about what all the conferences that I just, they didn't even know about it. So they were all excited and it was like, everyone was like positive and no one was over aggressive. And you know what I mean? Like it was, everyone was just like chill. And when I say over aggressive, I'm talking about like, like they weren't in your face, like trying to give you like, hey, this is my mixtape or you know what I mean? That's, you know what I mean? It was all like, hey, like, hey, I'm so-and-so, I'm from Memphis, I'm from this, and people were like, like genuinely like bonding. They weren't, it wasn't like, I call it like networking. Glad handing is like when it's like ineffective where you're just like pushing, pushing, and instead of trying to build a relationship or st stick, you know what I mean? Like stick meaning like, so people remember you next time they see you, or, you know what I mean? That type of thing. So what happens is, it was that environment and, and also Puff was there, so that helped a lot too, because he, you, he was omnipresent. You saw him actually in the rooms and you know. But do you mind, if, I think you are, are touching on such an important gem. I don't, we're talking music right yeah. now. But it doesn't matter what your line of work is. It doesn't matter what business or industry you're in. I asked him why did the Revolt Music Conference work? There was a white space. There was a hole, there was a gap in the marketplace. Whatever you do, the opportunity is there. Find the white space. Find what is not there. And that is your way to get in and to do something that's in demand. Yeah, so that's that's basically like why it worked, in my my opinion. Like you know, so you, in hindsight. You, in hindsight. You, you're talking about you 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 did the streaming panel there. Well, I introduced it. Yeah. You introduced yeah. the Kenna was panel, the moderator, and then he uh, introduced it. Which is, again, it's the perfect segue for where your story gets really, really interesting. Yeah, and that's a, very, it gets very interesting. And then that was all a blur. So if you have any questions about that time, I don't remember shit. <laughs> but what happened was, I get to Spotify. So actually, after I did that, I actually did a decision tree. And the decision tree was, 
what am I gonna do? If, am I gonna stay in LA, move? Am I gonna stay in music? You know what I mean? Because I was getting older. Am I gonna, you know, if, or, or, or am I gonna get out of music and maybe work for like a Coca-Cola and just work in the music department, you know? Uh, uh, was I gonna uh, do the tech thing? And if I did a tech thing, what, where are my skills transferable to? You know what I mean? Because I have these skills, but it's not transferable to everywhere, right? So I had to identify companies like, okay, and I did a decision tree, and uh, Spotify was actually in that decision tree. Really? Yes. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.